Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome back to EC3 Really Cooks. I am Roger Ramsey, the Executive Chef Instructor here at the Culinary Pathway at the Early College and Career Center. Dear friend Bobby Tossins, back behind us. Uh, we're going to get together today, we're going to put together some seafood dishes. Uh, we live in the South as we do. Most of the seafood we get is going to be battered and deep fried. We're going to try to shake that up just a little bit. We're still going to do a little pan fried here and there, but uh, before the day is over, we're going to pan fry a piece of cod, uh, serve it with some risotto and some peas. We're going to take a catfish, which is noted for being fried and delicious. We're going to do a little thing a little different with him. We're going to blacken them. Uh, we're going to take some flounder, which is a flatfish, and stuff him up with some shrimp stuffing. And Mr. Bobby, his all-time favorite dish in the world are plain old crab legs. So he's got a few tips and tricks he's going to tell y'all. Uh, about how to get the most out of those expensive jewels of goodness. So hang out with us, be right back and we'll start making some food. Okay, folks, we're gonna start off with a completely simple dish. We're just gonna pan fry some cod. Um, cod's a wonderful light white fish. Uh, I prefer the, the loin, the, the chunkier piece of meat to the fillets. And that's what we have here. Uh, a few things on buying your fish. If you're buying fillets or loin, something that's broken down, give it a good sniff. If it smells terribly fishy, it may be getting a little low, okay? Uh, if you're buying a fresh whole fish, then there are things you can look for. The color of the gills, you want to be bright and red. Uh, the, the eyes are nice and shiny. They're not dull and glazed over. Those are all indications that that fish is getting a little bit old. So, like I said, this perfectly simple, simple preparation. We're going to pan fry them, so we need a pan. That worked out well. If there is a trick to frying or sauteing anything, it's always, always, always get your pan hot first. Um, the saying is hot pan and cold oil, your food won't stick. What we have here is a couple cotyloids that trimmed them down so they're the same size. We're just going to salt them a little black pepper. Good to go. If you look at that piece of fish, one side's gonna look better than the other. We're gonna call it a presentation side. That's the side you wanna put down into your pan first. We're going to fry it in a little butter. This is butter we melted in the microwave, okay? Uh, there was some foam on top, that was water. So we scooped it out, got rid of it, and you'll see a little bit of a sediment on the bottom. That's milk solids. We don't want eat that either. We just want the butter fat out of the middle. So, pad's hot, add a little fat, your lipid of choice, then lay your fish in, presentation side down. Always put pan in the food away from you. Reason for that, if it's gonna splash, you'd rather it splash away than splash at. We're gonna give it about two, two and a half minutes on each of the four sides, and uh, our fish will be done. That's how quick and easy it is. I need to grab a pair of tongs. I'll be right back to turn. Always forgetting something. Now, when you go to turn your food, if it sticks to the pan, leave it alone for a minute. It will turn loose. It's telling you it's not ready to turn. Turn the pan around a little bit. We do have real burners, all sorts of nice equipment, but this little butane burner makes it so much easier to show y'all what we're doing. So they're great for demonstration purposes. Another minute. Turn that heat down just a little bit. That little stray piece we trimmed up is going to go in too well because I'm hungry. It's a little snack. And folks, that's about how quick and easy it is. It's going to take another minute or so. Uh, we're going to put it on a plate on top of some risotto, drop a few peas on it. 
because you need something green on your plate, and that'll be that. So, give me just a minute. I think Mr. Bobby's going to come visit y'all and do some flounder next. Welcome back to EC3 Really Cooks. Today is seafood day. Uh, we're going to start off with some flounder. Uh, flounder is not um, a very thick fish. You can if you find them fresh uh, in the south. They do have some big fillets. What we have here is a little bit smaller. We're going to do a stuffed uh, fillet, no, a stuffed flounder fillet. Uh, our stuffing, first of all, it is made up of celery, uh, bell peppers. We used a red and a yellow one. Uh, some onions, and then we also added in garlic. So it's the, the Trinity plus garlic. Uh, and then slowly stirred in some breadcrumbs that we had, and then also added a little bit of butter so that this would bind up some. So we'll be able to stuff this inside the flounder. Now, if you get a large flounder, um, you're able to kind of slice it, make a pocket, stuff the pocket, seal it back up, stick it in the oven. Ours weren't that big, so we're gonna make some uh, flounder sandwiches to begin with. Now, on the flounder, there's obviously two sides to it, but the side that is darker was actually on the top. It was on the outside of the fish, okay? So I usually, whereas the inside is very white, so usually what I'll do is I'll have the back of the uh, flounder go down first, and then it'll always be on the outside, and the whiter meat will always be on the inside. So before we put this one down, I'm just gonna do just a little bit of salt and pepper on it. I'm gonna do this one as well. And we're gonna add just a touch of Spanish paprika. Adds a little bit of color, adds a little, just a touch of spice. I'm going to take the flounder. Set it down on a dish pan, I mean, on a pan that we're going to um, cook in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes. This is not a very difficult dish to make. Um, it probably took me four or five minutes to chop all of the ingredients for the stuffing. Um, the flounder fillets, actually, we got them from the store just like that. So we're gonna to try to get this as tight as we can. And we're gonna take our other filet. We're actually gonna set it right on top of it. Let me do the same with this next one. And again, when you have small fillets like this, they are very delicate. Um, down the spine, or the part that was cut down the spine, that uh, a lot of times can split. And actually, we have one of ours that did split. But it can split there, that's not a problem. It's not gonna mess up the dish at all. It doesn't make one part cook faster than the other. Flounder and some of the smaller fillets that we do, top, uh, tilapia, things of that sort, they do cook really quickly, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to flip these uh, when you have them in the oven. So we're just gonna make basically some fish sandwiches. Now, if you have a larger fillet, and I'm gonna try to use this one, what you can do, do it on this side here, sorry. You can roll it. Now, what I don't like about rolling them is that I don't get as much stuffing. Over here, I had three large spoon fills. Here, I'm not gonna be able to do quite as much. I got too much in it. But, uh, ah, roll it over. I have a bamboo skewer. You can use a toothpick or anything like that. 
Then I'm gonna take all of this, set it on here. Try to keep it all tucked in. Not cooperating. Then we're going to top them all with just a little bit of butter. And when we come out, when they, we get them out of the, the oven, we will do the exact same thing again. We'll put a little bit more butter on it. We're also going to put a little lemon juice on them. We use these strainers when we do our lemon because there could be seeds that come out. We're just gonna All right. Do one last dash of salt and pepper. Just a touch more paprika. And we're gonna put this in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes when it comes out. Uh, it will be delicious and we'll be right back with more of our seafood day here on EC3 Really Cooks. Uh, folks, fish that's ubiquitous to the south is the catfish. And most of the catfish we get now are farm raised, it's nice clean water. It's not the old muddy fish that we used to get. You had to soak for a day or two after you filleted them to get rid of that mud taste. Um, we do a lot of fried catfish around here. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, it's not good for you, but we'll do something a little different. We're gonna make some blackened catfish. This is our blackened seasoning, and it's just a concoction. Let me read to you what all is in it. We've got some black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika. We have dried parsley, cayenne, uh, pepper, a little oregano, a little thyme. What's not in there? Salt and pepper. We're gonna do that separate, and it's right here. We want to take our, our blackened season. You can buy this already mixed up in a jar. It's perfectly fine too, just saying. And we need to put a fairly decent amount on it, on our fishes. Now, I didn't mention it, but that little aluminum skillet sitting on the burner has been there for a couple minutes. It's hot. We've still got our clarified butter. This time we're not gonna put it in the pan though. We're gonna take it and put it right straight on the fish. would take our fish and lay them in that skillet. Don't do this at home. If you're gonna make some blackened fish at home, blackened anything, do it outside. Uh, we've got a commercial grade range hood behind us. Probably should have done this under it. Everybody's going to start sneezing and coughing here in a minute. Hey, we have fire. We have lots of fire. If you get a fire at the house, don't worry about it. Turn your heat off. They cover it up. The fire will go out. Doesn't have any choice. We wanted it this time though. So we'll put it back on. And folks, that is how fast and stinky it is to make blackened catfish. It is cooked through. It is seasoned. It's a little crusty. It's a little spicy. When we plate this up, it's going to be a little bit of Cajun corn. That's just uh, sweet corn that we've added some pepper and onion, a little celery, and uh, some Cajun seasonings too. So, I'm gonna move this, now that the fire's out, don't move a pan if it's on fire. I'm gonna move this and go build a plate, and we'll be back in just a bit. Well, welcome back, folks. What did we learn from back in catfish? Number one, do it outside. Fire department will come to your house and have my smoke. Number two, if you catch something on fire, it's not the end of the world. Turn the heat off, cover it up. Guess what, it's still food. It ain't burnt. 
it ain't bad if it need it. Uh, next, what's really neat about this job is uh, Mr. Bobby and I get to kind of make whatever we want. We do the stuff we like. Uh, one of my favorite dishes are crab cakes. This is the makings for crab cakes. What all do we have here? We've got some Old Bay Caesar. We've got a little breadcrumb. We've got some mayonnaise. Now, what the recipe doesn't say but is in there is a couple tablespoons of reduced heavy cream. Adds the richness to it, fattiness. It's a wonderful thing. Got a little green pepper, a little diced brunoise onion, I'm sorry, uh, bell pepper. We've got a little baking soda, add egg to bind, a little parsley, some butter. And what we have here is crab meat. It's what's referred to as special crab meat. To be honest, it's not that special. Uh, it's real crab meat and it has real crab taste. It's not lump crab meat, it's not jumbo lump crab meat, uh, mostly because it's about half the price, but it's still crab meat. It's a wonderful thing. It goes well for, for what we're doing here. Wouldn't work too well as a garnish, but for crab cake, it's okay. So let's start with our breadcrumbs. Half cup. Everybody into the pool, our Old Bay seasoning. I think it was about a teaspoon or so. We've got a little bacon powder, keeps them light. We've got our peppers. Now, the recipe says roasted red peppers. I wanted to crunch in the snap of fresh peppers. So we've got a little bell pepper, red and yellow, and a brunoise. A little green onion, adds the sweetness, adds the crunch. We've got our mayonnaise and our reduced heavy cream. And we've got some parsley. So let's get that mixed up. Let's add our egg to it. Everybody's in the pool except for the crab. Reason for that is that crab's already in kind of small pieces. We don't want to break it up any more than what it is. A little more of that heavy cream. So everybody's in the pool except our special crab meat. So let's get him in there. Now, crab is a little luxurious. That little tin, it's half a pound. A special crab meat was still about $13 at Mrs. Kroger's. Uh, the lump crab meat's closer to 20. The jumbo lump's closer to 25. Half pound. It's expensive, but it's so good. So you gotta splurge once in a while, absolutely. So everybody's in the pool, everybody's mixed together. The breadcrumbs and the eggs gonna bind it, but it's still gonna take a minute in a chill chest to let everything come together. So we've got a two ounce portion scoop. Water. Fill it up, press it down into a little patty, and let them rest. We're gonna put it into the cooler about 30 minutes or so. Then we'll come back, pan fry them, maybe a little tartar sauce on the side, maybe a little cocktail sauce. And that's gonna be our starting course for our seafood day here at EC3. So I'm gonna finish pattying out the rest of these crab cakes. I think Mr. Bobby's gonna come up next. He's gonna visit with you some more about some crab. And uh, we're gonna be eating shortly. Welcome back to EC3 Really Cooks. It's seafood day here in our kitchen. And one of the things that uh, I wanna talk about today is actually crab. Um, there are different types of crab. Uh, if you are on the East Coast, especially in the Maryland, Baltimore, uh, Washington DC area, they have blue crab. It's a totally different thing than what we're talking about. For me, it's a lot messier. Um, it's a little bit funner. You are cracking whole crabs open, finding the meat, getting out of it. Um, for most of us around here, if we go to a place that has all you can eat crab, it's actually gonna be snow crab or bear dye crab, uh, which mainly come from the Alaska area. Uh, and it doesn't matter as far as snow crab or um, bear dye crab or king crab, it is all cooked before it is actually sent to you. Um, I have a 
place called the Crab Broker. That's who I use from Alaska. They send to me, it's already cooked. And when you talk to people from Alaska that do that, they eat their crab cold. I don't like it, I've tried it. It is not my favorite. But what I'm gonna do today is try to show you how to get the most meat out of um, crab legs. Uh, because sometimes you could be in a restaurant where you just order a pound of crab legs, it comes to you, and it's not all you can eat. So you've got to get as much meat out of it as you can. I'm going to try to demonstrate how to do that. Um, another thing that we do, we use ghee. Ghee is clarified butter. Um, it actually, it's kind of kept as a solid. And what clarified butter is, it comes out like this. Sorry. And then all you have to do is melt it down, add some heat to it. Clarified butter, they've taken regular butter, heated it up, then they've removed the fat. They skim the fat parts off the top of it. And what you're left with is what is called clarified butter. And you can get ghee in any of your local um, rest, or supermarkets. So I'm gonna start, the one thing, and I have some that are over here that we've steamed. This is a steamed one. Um, they come out of there pretty hot. Now. If you are not at an all-you-can-eat place, this top cluster part here has crab meat in it. And it doesn't take a lot of work, but it does take some work. You crack open these little pods that were at the bottom of where the feet were. Sorry, I'm trying to work them out. And you can fish out some crab meat. Now, if you're at an all-you-can-eat place, I wouldn't worry about this too much, but if you're not, it's some of the sweetest meat that there is because it's meat that it's the parts of the crab that isn't um, used a lot. It's not like it's a muscle or something. But again, all of the crab that you would get in our local area would all be pre-cooked. Now, if you get lobster, lobster you wanna cook uh, from the live lobster. Uh, it tastes better. If you get it shipped in, it'll be shipped in live. Uh, if you buy lobster tails at our local restaurants or supermarkets, you can, um, they flash freeze those tails pretty quickly, so you will actually cook it from the raw steak. Um, all of the crab that is sent in though is typically already pre-cooked. Okay, so what they were gonna talk about, we're talking about blades and different parts of the crab leg. The largest piece, I'm gonna leave for the last, so I'll set that aside. Now, what I pulled out, these two little whiskers, they um, called blades. Blades hold the meat inside it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out to the tip. So we're gonna pull out the blades first. Those hold the meat in. So we're gonna crack away from yourselves with the thumbs. Then I'm gonna put my thumbs on the bottom. Crack up, crack down, and... We remove the crab. Now there is still more crab that is in there. These are a little bit smaller than you might get some other places. but there is a lot of meat that is inside a crab that a lot of people don't know about or know that it's in there. So if you're at a restaurant, you can use your fingers on this. When I do the actual claw, that is where I do use the crab crackers out. You're gonna take out the pincher part and it will come out with its own blade. And then once I've cracked that open, you can have what comes from what would be called the lump crab meat, which I believe we used in some of our other dishes that we had today. So there's a couple of different ways to get crab out of, or get the crab meat out of the crab legs. Again, you break it away from you, then break up and down, and usually, 
it all comes out. But we'll be back in just a few minutes where we finish up everything else. We have all of our platings and um, we'll give you our recipes down at the bottom of the page. Well, folks, that's our seafood feast here at EC3 today. Uh, we got Mr. Bobby's crab legs. They're cooked as soon as they're caught because they're perishable. They, they won't last if you send them off in the mail, even on ice. So uh, if you buy crab legs in Kentucky, they're already cooked. They had to be. Uh, we've got our blackened catfish. Two lessons learned there. Don't do it inside. The fire department will come to your house. And if you get a fire, it's not the end of the world. Turn the heat off, cover it over. Didn't even ruin the food. How about that? We've got crab cakes, which Mr. Bobby talked about the blue crab, uh, more likely what it's made from than the king crab, okay? Or, or the bear die or the snow. Uh, it, it's the little crabs. That's why it costs so much. It's a uh, labor intensive. There's uh, folks sitting on stools all day long with the little pig pulling that meat out of crab shells. Labor intensive. Mighty tasty though. We've got uh, a pan fried cod with a little simple risotto and some peas. Uh, put peas on a plate because you need something green. And last but certainly not least is our stuffed flounder, uh, stuffed with a, a bread crumb and shrimp stuff. So that's our seafood feast here at EC3. We appreciate you coming to visit. Uh, remember, if you need any catering work done, our program else is self-sustaining. Our kids buy the goods for our pathway through our catering operation. So give us a call, shoot me an email. We'll attach all that to it. If you'd like a, a recipes, uh, Miss Alexis Lee, she's gonna put those on the program. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email, we'd love to hear from you. I appreciate your time greatly. So uh, till next time, I'm Roger Ramsey, EC3, and uh, come back and visit us next time, okay? Thanks, Al.
Thank you. 